Okay, hello everyone. Sorry, I just with the recording because the cloud is full. Saying, just a moment, please. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to the second part of the dedication, aka sharing is caring. <laughs> so let's start with some prayers as usual. Ta -da. In the Buddha, Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. I take refuge until I attain enlightenment. Through the merit of practicing generosity and the rest, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. In the Buddha, Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly, I take refuge until I attain enlightenment. Through the merit of practicing generosity and the rest, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. In the Buddha, Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly, I take refuge until I attain enlightenment. Through the merit of practicing generosity and the rest, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. May all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the genuine happiness devoid of suffering. And may they dwell in boundless equanimity that is free from attachment and aversion. May all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the genuine happiness devoid of suffering, and may they dwell in boundless equanimity that is free from attachment and aversion. May all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the genuine happiness devoid of suffering. And may they dwell in boundless equanimity that is free from attachment and aversion. Sorry, I'm still struggling with this one recording thing here. Okay, so no, all is good. <laughs> Thank you, Amir. Um, yeah, why not? Maybe um, where are you here? I just you can do a local recording. That doesn't hurt. Thank you. Um, okay, welcome back, everyone. Good to see you. So um, yeah, I think most or all of you have been there, I think, two days ago. So I guess you all know where we are. Um, but still, um, so we are going through the last chapter of Shantideva's Bodhisattva which is dedication of all the goodness, merit, healthy, positive, healthiness, positiveness, and whatever we have accumulated um, through our practice of the six parameters, which is sort of the essence of every Bodhisattva's practice. And this, um, now in the 10th chapter, we have started to share and to dedicate first um, just generally um, by um, remembering that wherever beings are in samsara, they are um, suffering, one of the three types of suffering. And um, then more specifically, uh, we went through the lower realms and the suffering that is associated with those. So, um, yeah, so we talked more at length about um, suffering in the hell realm, then shortly about suffering in animal realm, and then suffering <clears throat> in the hungry ghost realm. And so by remembering those specific sufferings that uh, beings can... Um, yeah, experience. We we then dedicated the marriage, always connected with the wish that yeah they are free of that suffering and 
that whatever is creating suffering in their projection or experience that this is transformed into some positiveness or some something that is also supportive in the path um, ideally okay then um let's maybe just go to the next verses and then oh yeah after a few verses we always then discuss um now we are coming more to the sufferings of the higher realms so there we have human realm uh, semi demigod realm and the god realm and um so we start i think with the with the human realm um and there we talk about specific sufferings now from verse 18 onwards and uh, the first one is here mentioned oh i'm not sharing anymore that was quick um so here we're talking about um now we will go through various sufferings that of course also animals can have and i guess maybe other realms too um but usually it's more explained in the context of human realm being being blind either being born blind or or we are um that is acquired so and yeah form is sort of the object of the eye and yeah we are not we are not able to perceive it and um there are usually like different causes for that um one big cause is called like obstructing the light of dharma light um that that can mean many things you know that we destroy dharma books or that we disrespect dharma books by stepping on them or that we um disturb others who want to practice or study dharma or if we like really with a bad intention criticize the dharma that is these are like things that are sort of categorized as uh, obstructing the light of dharma of course criticizing is always good not maybe not always good but yeah. it's often good and we are also of course encouraged to examine and analyze the dharma and be critical um but here it's really meant uh, like um just for the sake of criticizing it and without really much information um, being very negative about it and maybe also like intentionally with a bad intention trying to um, discourage other dharma practitioners but um, or even other religions you know that we are like very like negative about other religions of course, if there's an interreligious dialogue, then it's good to talk about the pros and cons of whatever tradition, but um, here is really meant in a negative way. And um, yeah, and of course, also if we blind others, that is also a cause for being blind ourselves. And um, so here, the practical advice or prayer of Shantideva is may the blind see form so that all beings may be free from blindness and the causes which are just mentioned of blindness and yeah the best um the best remedy like specifically against blindness is basically um yeah seeing the light of dharma which means like developing the eyes of wisdom you know to see the two truths relative truth and absolute truth how things appear and how things really are that is basically what we have studied in the ninth chapter when we studied Madhyamika. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, um, being deaf, uh, can be um, another suffering that we can experience. For example, in the human room, um, there the cause uh, could be uh, that we are, um, <clears throat> for example, like. Um, Inter, I think the classical uh, uh, cause is like if we are interrupting musical offerings to the three jewels um, and um, yeah or that maybe we also interrupt um, other people's hearing of the three jewels and that is of course also a big uh, suffering um, and 
Yeah, I think I think Immanuel Kant, I think he said, if we are blind, we are getting more and more distant from from things. And if we are deaf, we are getting more and more distant from beings. Um so um and here, yeah, we of course pray that everybody may be may may overcome deafness and the causes of deafness. And um yeah, and so we should therefore also not uh, destroy anything that is related to the sound of dharma we should not be an obstacle to anything that is related to the sound of dharma and um yeah i think that is quite easy and then the next one i think that in christianity that is something that god eventually cursed the women right that they the birth is very painful um, and just as it was with Maya Devi, may pregnant women uh, give birth, or give, may pregnant women give birth without any pain. So, yeah, that is um, wherever that is coming from. But, yeah, giving childbirth is definitely painful and dangerous uh, for everyone involved. I mean, especially the mother and the child. Um, um nowadays of course with modern technology it's um, the mortality is not that high um but in earlier years that was really like a big big cause for mortality and that was like in average reducing the uh, the lifespan of beings you know like humans um and just because of the the removal of childbirth that's why the average of lifespan is or expectancy is actually much higher now um but it's not that in earlier times people didn't uh live like 80 years that indeed happened you know but just um the death connected to giving childbirth was quite high yeah and it's it's really painful for the mother of course as we know and yeah also uh, for the babies, like um, Gampopa is talking a lot about that in his jewel ornament of liberation, how many sufferings are there involved, you know, and how, I mean, I think he's comparing it with many things, what <clears throat> a baby is feeling when she or he is born, um, because, yeah, he, one is so used for ten, nine months, basically, to swim, you know, <laughs> and only have water around, but suddenly it's, and warmth, and then, and darkness, and then suddenly it's so dry, it's so cold, it's so bright, you know, there's a lot of trauma, actually, for the newborn. Mm. So that is from the baby's side, but here, um, Shantideva is focusing actually more on the mother's side, that yeah, all women may be free from the pain of giving birth, and that it uh, may be effortlessly and painlessly, yeah, and giving birth to healthy kids. And the example here is uh, Maya Devi. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, the mother of um, Prince Siddhartha, who became the Buddha. So she was the queen. And um, yeah, she's, um, I don't know if that's really true, but she's used usually as the archetype for that, um, that she was pregnant, but still she, during her pregnancies, she actually taught uh, many beings um, even the like went to to, to the farmers and um, and taught them and also she she had like a healing power while she was pregnant so she when she touched uh, others um, you know with her hand then uh, they got healed um, and she also performed a lot of charity while she was pregnant mm -hmm. and then finally when it was about time to give birth then she went to the forest um, of Lumbini and then um, and that is also said that, that is showing her love to solitude so that was another auspicious factor you know all these auspicious factors uh, that she performed during pregnancy they, they are um, believed to to be um, um to be the cause and condition why her pregnancy was not painful but of course she was pregnant with buddha um so but going to the forest was also showing her love for solitude and then yeah she gave birth to uh, prince Siddhartha, and there were so many wonderful signs and again flowers everywhere and no pain but a lot of, lot of bliss 
Mm. Okay, maybe one or two more, and then let's discuss. Then the next one, not having anything to wear. So Sundadeva here is hoping that um, may those who have nothing to wear and therefore been therefore those who are naked find clothing. Mm. And here the main cause for, for having nothing to wear is basically stealing, especially if it's from the three jewels or represent yeah, or representations of the three jewels, like if we steal the robes or if we steal texts or, or offerings or relics, um, or also if we steal from our parents and um, or generally if we are very like stingy or jealousy or if we only give in a very calculative manner without really a good heart but with a lot of agendas in mind um, those things uh, are usually the causes for not having enough clothes and then also being cold cold or unprotected um yeah and here shantideva is uh, wishing that all of them may be free from is exactly that suffering and be happy and have, of course, very pleasurable and good clothes and um, soft clothes and um, yeah and, and yeah the main and also of course that may everybody be free of creating more causes for having nothing to wear. So yeah, one should be careful not to. In, uh, accidentally steal offerings or um, some reporters also say that if for example if we find a good statue somewhere then we should not start uh, bargaining you know on on the black market or something but there one should be generous and just buy the, or give the price that was asked for you know um, and um, and yeah it could also be that that the statue was stolen you know so or whatever vajra or bell then therefore it's always good to consecrate all these items um, so that we are not connected to this um, yeah negativity another thing here people are of course are so so many people like humans and animals um, are hungry on 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 this planet also that is uh, caused by stealing especially if we steal food uh, from others and therefore yeah, Shantideva is praying that all the hungry people find food and that they really have good food nourishing food um, yeah good food or nourishing food is of course there's nothing wrong with it but it's suggested because we have a um, precious human life, life hopefully and um, our aim is that it lasts long and um, for the benefit of others so therefore yeah uh, junk food is not something so much to be prayed for but it should be really healthy making food or life uh, prolonging food same of course with drinks may those who don't have anything to drink <clears throat> Um, yeah, if this if may they thirsty find water and delicious drinks. So um, yeah, fresh juice we can visualize here. You know, a lot of vitamins or superfoods in it. Um, Atisha was praising um, the the water in Tibet. I'm sure you know that. Um, Therefore, he said the water in Tibet is so clear, I mean, compared to India, um, and, and gave like eight qualities that it's so healthy for the throat, for the stomach, and so gentle, and yeah, a few more like this. And um, yeah, so so that is the classical example, but, but yeah, we can also just apply to whatever is healthy now and, of course, pure. I think that is all very clear, but do you have anything to discuss on these verses? Tada, Emilia. <laughs> and everybody, please don't be shy, just because Emilia is asking. <laughs> please also feel encouraged to ask or discuss or criticize. Yes, madam. And it relates the deafness. It relates to when um, 
now when we were in in India and Rinpoche was giving our transmissions and uh, some people didn't stop talking while <laughs> the transmissions were going on, would that come to that classification of somehow blocking or disturbing yes. the, the, the hearing, the transmissions? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure everybody who has received transmissions together with Tibetans or Bhutanese, and that should not sound racist, but after a few hours of transmissions, normally Tibetans and Bhutanese are very much in a picnic mode and kids running around. And um, yeah, then the transmission really becomes at best secondary. <laughs> and yeah, that is, that's a pity because yeah, transmissions, Rinpoche is always very like... Um, relaxed about what we can do when there are transmissions you know we can do emails we can read but we should not sleep and we should have nothing that is blocking our ears you know so we cannot listen to music yes and if there's party going on around us um then that is um yes exactly that is um stopping us receiving the transmissions and therefore those party people they yeah they accumulate that cause that could lead to deafness yeah also another example is if, if we are like um you know if we practice in a group and we use our damaru or bell extra loud <laughs> that is also not good you know if we disturb our colleagues who are practicing with us you know with our noisy instruments two noisy instruments you know mm. Yeah. Okay. And then there are a couple more of these sufferings that unfortunately happen easily. Now, poor poverty. Mm. So may the poor find wealth. So this is if somebody is destitute, of course, the causes are uh, sort of clear, also stealing, robbery, and so on. And uh, Shantaneva is hoping that everybody has um, wealth. And of course, the best wealth is contentment. You know, if you if you feel you have enough, you know, then you are wealthy. Um, but even if you have like Dagobert Duck, you know, you have everything. Um, I think Dagobert Duck has different names in different countries so i don't know if that makes sense um then um yeah if, so let's say even if you have a lot of things um but if you're not content you still feel poor so therefore yeah the best wealth is always um contentment so that, that we that we just have the feeling yeah i have enough really it's good how it is <clears throat> and then the the next one here is if you are um yeah, that is apparently more meant for the mental suffering. Mm. So if if um, if somebody feels weak or mm, what is the word like careworn um, and yeah maybe depressed um, and um, then may this person yeah find joy and happiness you know whenever one is really tormented mentally maybe like yeah clinical depression or sadness or um, despair you know then it is good to to wish the opposite but i think yeah despair actually is more here the may the forlorn find new hope I don't know if we have German speakers here, but forlorn, I, I checked, is actually the same. It's, it's like in German, verloren. It's coming from that. Um, it's, yeah. Anyway, so if one is full of despair, you know, then and is totally hopeless, um, then Shantideva is praying that those beings, you know, who are mentally not well and disturbed, uh, that they find new hope. And constant happiness and prosperity and success and so that their mind is whole again you know so that their life is, is, is good you know on a very relative level and that yeah they may be strong and um, accomplish their wishes and have yeah more courage and more self-confidence mm. 
yeah, in in the seventh chapter, we already talked about uh, diligence and the opposite of diligence, and that was laziness. And there was one laziness that was being like that, you know, like being depressed or dis discouraged or um, not having self confidence. So, um, and yeah, many problems come from that. So therefore, it's important to 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 have positive courage and positive self-confidence not in the over dosage like every arrogance but yeah this joy of living and the joy and um of doing good things oh there's some chat thing going on forlorn verlassen yes abandoned or lonely also yes <laughs> Yeah, I think also loneliness is a big, big thing uh, nowadays. Mm. Ken Sarimpuch is saying that is um, sort of the side effect of what we actually wanted. You know, we all want to be very like independent on our own flat, you know, our own space and privacy. But that is actually alienating, uh, alienating us from each other. And then, yeah, many people feel lonely and that creates, again, depression and so many other mental Mm, turbulences or term, turmoil so um, and um, yeah so therefore also be careful not to be I mean it's good to have privacy like in the sense of isolating oneself from all the troubles and upheavals in the world but yeah also don't overdo it you know so that you're not getting too isolated and too lonely Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess maybe every day it's good to have both, you know, to be with people and be alone, to not fall into any extreme. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are coming more to sickness on the in the physical sense. Um, and yeah, from Tibetan point of view, sickness or illness is always coming from an imbalance of our elements. Um, you have these five elements, how our body is construed. And since the entire world is also made out of these same five elements, the the outer body, the outer world can be used, you know, to to bring our balance uh, elements in back to balance. Um, and the cause for sickness and illness yeah, are always like negative actions where we harm others, we kill others, or also um I think cancer input is said also if we are if we are uh, going to mediums, you know he he thinks like many many mediums are not really like kosher, but they use very like some samsaric spirits, you know to uh, and that can create many many negativities in our body. Yeah, and sicknesses, illnesses, yeah, we, I guess we all have been victims of those and um so there, there can be like so many different illnesses and symptoms. Mm. And Gampopa, um, he talks about like seven things um, uh, about what, what, what the suffering is when we are ill, you know, um, I made a list, so I will just read it. Um, so suffering of great pain. Okay, that is ob obvious. Then he and Gampopa lived, uh, now I forgot, I think maybe 1,100 after Christ or something. A really long time ago, wait, Gampopa. He was a doctor, by the way, but then he lost his wife and kids and then became a monk and then the famous Gampopa. Yeah, 1,079 he was born. Um, so he said like uh, sickness or illness have, has like seven sufferings. Um, the first one is yeah having pain. The second is that we have like harsh operations that are painful or maybe also nowadays diagnostics, you know, that are painful. My most unfavorite was always like this um, bone marrow thing. You know, if you try to get the bone marrow of somebody that is like, I think that is super harsh. Um, then Gampupa is saying the third one is um, we have to take very bitter medicine mm, or untasty medicine. Mm. And then the fourth suffering is, yeah, that we have to confine to a specific diet. We cannot eat what we want anymore. We cannot drink what we want. Um, 
And then the fifth suffering is to please the doctors. <laughs> Uh, that is another suffering if, if you have an illness you know you have to be sort of in, in friendly terms with the doctors which is sometimes difficult um, and then um, the sixth suffering is uh, the dec decreasing wealth um, I don't know in some countries I think the health insurance is quite good but uh, yeah I know in other countries you can get bankrupt you know if you if you if you have a serious disease and then last and of course not the least or maybe it's the least actually sorry it's the suffering of the fear of death you know you you if you have a sort of serious illness yeah that, that is very like um, present there also you know the fear that we might die so there are these seven kinds of illnesses and yeah you can read more on them in Gampopa's jewel ornament of liberation and um, so Shantideva is praying that may all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their illness. And um, yeah, may every disease in the world never occur again so that yeah, all the causes of illness are re removed and one is like, yeah, having a well-functioning, precious human life. Of course, we can also practice with a disease and maybe we can even use the disease and that difficulty or that pain as the practice mm. but in many cases might might be um might be more conducive to, to just be healthy you know and have the strength and and not this extra uh, physical problem or maybe not to need um medicine that is maybe also messing with our clarity or with other things there are so many more problems here um may the frightened cease to be afraid um yeah if, if you a little bit are familiar with tara tara there are these 21 taras and they are all protecting from various fears so yeah you can read all about fears there um the 21 taras but yeah it could be like um just murderers or shootings or bandits or demons or fire or tornadoes or dictators or bad presidents or you know whatever or um of course also s smaller things you know um and yeah fear is of course uh, coming always from um from attachment and aversion you know we are um which is again based on ego clinging and i think we talked about that last time and those bound be freed mm -hmm. so we yeah may all, all those who are like imprisoned or chained physically or mentally you know like control who are mentally controlled or maybe who are cursed um, if you believe in that you know that may they be free from that and yeah may those who are powerless or who are weak yeah find power and be strong um and um yeah, from Buddhist point of view, like weakness comes if we are entangled in the eight worldly dharmas of hope and fear. So that's why that is the best to overcome. And for that, the best is again wisdom. That was also said in the ninth chapter. That is um, one of the main outcomes of realizing wisdom is to overcome hope and fear or the eight worldly dharmas. Mm. And then, and may people think of benefiting others or an, one another. That is, that implies uh, the, the the problem that we lack love. You know that we don't love each other enough. That we have, that our hearts are too hard and that we are too egoistic. So Shantideva is hoping that we can all open our hearts, have more gentle hearts, and uh, be loving and helpful and care, caring with each other. Okay, before we go on the road with the travelers, anything to discuss?
Yeah, it's not super cryptic, right? Mm -hmm. Then let's go through more verses then. I was actually hoping to finish today, but I'm a little bit um, aware that that might not happen. Um, let's see. So now, now there's a lot about travelers, and I guess nowadays uh, traveling is maybe safer. But at that time, yeah, you you really are like less protected and um, more alone and more in the jungles and with more wild animals and I don't know, maybe robbers also. But um, so there are a couple of traveler verses here. May all travelers find happiness everywhere they go. Mm. And without any effort, may they accomplish whatever they set out to. Yeah. And um, I mean, there, there were many merchants at that time also, of course, who had to travel a lot, you know, and they were gone for months. And, um, and then there are many problems, you know, like diseases they could get because it's maybe another climate or it's there. It's maybe it's a little bit more safe or hygienic at home. Um, of course, there can be bandits and gangs and robbers. Um, and that could also, um, that all this traveling, you could, of course, also always apply to the spiritual path, you know, that we are travelers there and that we face adversities like our good old or less good old uh, cliches and those things. Um, and so Shantideva is praying that we all um, then without any effort, without any hardships, accomplish and reach our goals, whatever they are. Um, and then, if they are good goals, of course. 24. Mm -hmm. May those who sail in ships and boats obtain whatever they wish for. Mm. Yeah, the classical example is always that people went uh, to go to, to islands to find precious jewels, you know. But then there were many storms, of course, on the ocean or sea monsters. And so may they then safely return to the shore. And may they joyfully reunite with their relatives, like um, so that they come back to the shore of their home and then meet their parents, loved ones, kids, and so on again. And then have quality time with them joyfully reunite okay still traveling may troubled wanderers who have lost their way uh, meet with fellow travelers um yeah so if one is lost in in, in wherever in forests and um and of course that is fearful and one is very unprotected then it's good to have some to meet some good companions or even travel guides if guides if possible who can protect us and then yeah without any fear of thieves and tigers may their going be easy without any fat fatigue so may they reach all the destination without difficulties mm. and yeah it's of course good to to also um, maybe if we if we are on a travel ourselves, you know, it's good maybe in the beginning of the journey or before the journey to, to make some good dedications and aspirations. Then 26, may those who find themselves in trackless, fearful wilderness. Um, yeah, and at that time, really like there might be, yeah, tigers, leopard, leopards, um, lions, of course, poisonous snakes or insects. And, um, and yeah. May one is free from those who you can find um, in the wilderness. Um, the children, the age, the unprotected. So everybody who is unprotected could be also mentally, you know, if you're full of fear or very distracted or what was the word earlier, forlorn or whatever. Mm -hmm. And those yeah, who are maybe sleeping or unconscious, stupefied or insane or crazy. Um, or maybe also who are oblivious to danger, you know, um, may they be guarded by beneficent deities, let's say, 
Ähm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's ending the traveling section. Anything about that? I think I even have some pictures on that. We once created a children's book, and there must be something from these stanzas too. Um, yeah, that was yeah, that was a picture for the travelers. And let's see if I have more from, from this verses. Um, um, yeah, but that is not so. Yeah, that's okay. Emilia, no, maybe Veronica first. Emilia already had that had her chance <laughs> to Norway. Yes. Um, uh, can you put up the ver verse 25 again? Lasso, lasso, lasso. May troubled wanderers. Yeah, I, I was just thinking because you commented on verse 24, the fact that it could be seen as also the travelers um, on the path. Yes. Um, and I just realized when reading verse 25 that that one if we see it uh, under the light of travelers on the path it's really beautiful i just wanted yeah. to share that i i spontaneously <laughs> read it uh, with that angle when you commented the previous one and 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 said that wow this is how it is important it, can it be read that way also to see that sure. how we need to find other Sangha members. Yes. And the thieves and tigers could be any people or any any anybody who would stand in the way of our path in, in some way. Yeah, or the tigers or thieves within our mind, you know, also. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was just a, a reflection like that. I, I found that really powerful when reading it, yeah. thinking that the travel was the path and thinking yes. about the importance of finding fellow Sangha members. Yeah, it's often said, yeah, it's really important to have Sangha members who, um, or beings who, who support us and protect us and have a yeah. good influence and... Yeah. and who have a vast mind, you know, but otherwise it, it really it's contagious. Yeah, it, it really resonates for me that way, um, specifically because of the situation I'm in where I'm quite far away from, you know, um, there's not so much going on in Norway <laughs> within <laughs> Buddhism. So, yeah, and being a part of this, this, this group, it's only the second time I join you. So, yeah, it really resonated. That's all I wanted to share. Thank you. <laughs> But I'm, I'm a Norway friend, and by the way, I got your email, I will answer, but um, I think the good thing is in Norway, people are generally kind no, and friendly, that I think, even though maybe not Sangha members, but I thought generally <laughs> that there's more humanity there, you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, yes, in, in, in general, yes, that's how it, at least um, foreigners perceive most. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is true. But it also has a kind of, yeah, a little bit cold, cold kind of. Um, it, it's not so easy to get in touch with Norwegians. I have lived 25 years in another country um, and I'm only back in Norway uh, since a couple of years. And, and really making friends in Norway is not so easy, actually. Yeah, and, and my mother is definitely not very uh, developed. But okay, that's yeah. another story. <laughs> Thank you. Another story. My brother moved to Norway. That's why I'm sometimes there. And I think oh, 20 okay. years ago, but he worked in an international company. So therefore, I like immediately had like very many international friends living in yeah, Norway. Yeah. That that is helpful. But yeah, yeah, it's not the Norwegian Norwegians that he is meeting. No, yeah. exactly, exactly. But they, that's at, at the first sight. Yes, they are friendly. I I do confirm yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then let's go to Sweden and then to India, Emilia. <laughs> is uh, one one thing is actually to Veronica. Veronica, there is in Oslo, 
there is a Karma Tashi link I can write down, and they are wonderful. Kandrola goes there and gives teachings. They're really nice Sangha. Um, and Lama Chanchup is wonderful. So I'll just write down the name, KTL. Um, and um, yeah, Arn, what's the question about the Celestials? Who are, what are the, the Celestials who are like kind of protecting? Gods, no, let, demigods? No, let's say, let's say deities. Okay. It's the same word in Tibetan. I don't know why it was translated by celestial. You know, they use the same word for God or for deity in Tibetan. It's La. And um, yeah. Okay. That's why in, in, in German, actually, we say God and Godhood. Godhood is sort of the deity and God is the God realm. Um, but in Tibetan, it's the same. So, so really just use deities here. Because, yeah, we are not taking refuge to uh, God realm beings, and they might even, yeah, they might not be interested or powerful enough either. And yes, I have been there in this KTL in, in Oslo. A little bit expensive, but that's how Norway is. I think they have 50 euro for one teaching. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really lovely. And there's also a retreat center nearby. And Pallavi. Actually, uh, I was just thinking about that passage in uh, the verse and I think Veronica's suit. And the safe from threat, the eight great fears and 16 lesser fears. Uh, that's what usually we are kind of hijacked by in our minds. And is that part of it when we are lost on our way mentally, basically, the external fears and the internal fears? Yes. Yes, the biggest enemy is always inside, at least in me. I don't know about you guys. But <laughs> there, there was no question, right, Pallavi? No, no, I just wanted to no. clarify about this aspect of things about external and internal fears. Yeah. And all <laughs> cool. Um, but also Pallavi, uh, Prashant once found a dead leopard near the waterfall near Bia. So there's also external dangers actually where you are. It is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, Doc. Then um, where are we going now? Now we come to 27, where we wish that everybody is at, yeah, reaching their aims. Um, so may beings free from all states of no leisure and be endowed with faith, wisdom and kindness, with food obtained in a proper manner and excellent conduct may they be mindful throughout their lives Oops. Um, yeah here the, the, that is sort of the key word here like, that, that describes precious human life um, I mean, the opposite, like <laughs> free from all states of no leisure. That is the precious human life. Um, so may all beings have that. In other words, may all beings have the um, circumstances and situation to practice the Dharma. Or in other words, <laughs> may all beings uh, have the circumstances to to see the truth, you know, that's or practice the truth. Um it doesn't have to be Dharma in a Buddhist sense, you know. Mm. And be endowed with faith, wisdom, and kindness. Yeah. Um, you can also read that in words of my perfect teacher, the different kinds of faith. Um, um, wisdom is always the, these two types. You know, you see the relative truth and the absolute truth, how things appear and how things are. <clears throat> yeah, and kindness. Um and yeah, faith also re refers to to um, trusting karma, the principle of karma, and um, yeah, kindness is compassion and love, I guess, in this context. And they are all important. And yeah, in Mahayana, wisdom is always the most important um, because that is really what is cutting through the roots of um, all negative emotions. Everything else can only like 
mm, make them smaller or weaker, but not really like uprooting them. But wisdom is that what is really uprooting this. And wisdom also means we, we then on the path, we have the relative wisdom of to know what to do and what to reject. Um, and then, yes, food is, of course, important. Um, and there yeah, should be also the proper food. And um, so that is nourishing and healthy and that is obtained in a proper manner. If we study the Eightfold Noble Path, you know, there's this... Um, uh, right livelihood is one and so that is uh, meant here you know we have right uh, through life to, to right livelihood or right conduct we obtained the food so for example um, we are not yeah stealing it of course you know and um, we are not praising somebody just uh, with the agenda to get the food or the money from that person um or we are not praising somebody's generosity just to get money. You know, some people do that. Oh, Emilia, you're so generous, you know. You gave Palavi like 1,000 euro yesterday. So then I hope, you know, that she's she will do the same with me, you know, or that um, or one should also not, um, how is it called, pull, pull one's rank, you know, like I'm VIP so-and-so, you know, like I deserve to be... Um, Get, get these things you know so, so there are many things like how we could have a wrong livelihood and that should of course not be the case here mm. and um and then yeah excellent conduct is more than related um yeah to for example that we should avoid um a negative conduct in regards to the dharma that we make a business out of dharma or that we um we forget our vows and samayas and um but also like in in other um in more also in the worldly uh, con conduct yeah we should of course not have a i don't know the word but we don't we shouldn't have a conduct full of scandals you know or we should not um yeah, it's, it's of course, we are vegan, that would be the best. Um, mm. But if possible, at least don't kill anyone, you know, like actively, mm, those things. And yeah, so so that is um, what Shantideva is praying here, that uh, we have yeah, a good discipline, a good ethical behavior, which is, um, and that we keep our vows, you know, and vows are, are like in Vajrayana, it said like the Samayas are our friends, you know, the friends that, like Sangha friends, you know, like on the path. Um, so Samayas or vows are never like a burden or never enforced on us, but they're friendly, helpful, supportive uh, to simplify our life, you know, and direct our life on, a, on our spiritual journey. Mm. And yeah, we should, of course, be mindful throughout our lives. Um, and that could also mean throughout our or their lives, like in plural. So it also means it would, if Shantideva is praying that we remember our past lives, you know, because that would be actually good. Um, and then with a little bit of wisdom, maybe we can understand more how karma works and i think that would be super cool you know if i understand why i have i don't know maybe let's say a certain physical problem in this life if i would see the causes for that you know um that i think would be super good for us to um, to learn and yeah have a good learning learning curve or whatever we that we could have really have an increased understanding and um, yeah, I think there's also a story of a girl who then suddenly remembered her past lives and she was a dog and she was receiving, or she was there when Shariputra gave teachings and sort of by, by connecting to that incarnation, she, she then became a nun in this life and then she practiced and became um, enlightened so that that is like a very classical, simple story, but I think it would be super, would be super helpful to see really the cause and result relationships of 
big and small actions. Okay, then 28. Maybe just whenever you want to say something, raise your hand and uh, virtual hand and then. May all beings be without want for wealth, just like the treasury of space. Yeah, and here again, contentment is the best wealth, um, then we always have enough. Um, treasury of space is, space is actually like a specific samadhi that the bodhisattvas have. Um, and they can manifest um, whatever teachings or texts in the space, you know, because of their samadhi. Um, and without it being the source of dispute or harm, may they always enjoy as they wish. Um, yeah, usually people like to fight and we are all very competitive and it's very exhausting and we all want to keep our belongings and maybe increase it, you know. So there, Shantideva is asking or praying that we all be free from that kind of struggle, but that we just, um, yeah, without animosity, without competition, may we always enjoy um, whatever we wish for. Mm -hmm. And also that we enjoy what we have, you know, like usually we don't do that. Um, we have so much, but want so much more. Mm. Veronica. Um, yes, you just commented very briefly that uh, line with the treasury of space and linked that to a to a vow. Is that correct? I, I could could you comment a little bit more? I, I'm not sure I got the point. No, that is that's linked to a specific samadhi or meditation of bodhisattvas. That is the, the example here. So they have a specific absorption mentally, and mm, thanks to that, they can. In, that is a, so. There are so many specific absorptions the bodhisattvas or buddhas can have. And they always fulfill a certain function. And this samadhi has the function that they can manifest whatever precious thing just in space, you know, like text, teaching texts. Okay. Maybe you have read the Heart Sutra. There's also Buddha is going into the samadhi that is called profound illumination, it is said there. And that, that samadhi is, is sort of, um, is the cause for Shariputra not to be shy and asking the right questions, you know? So that is the function of that Samadhi. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, Shariputra and Ahad is interested in Mahayana practice, you know, that is classically unheard of, but that Samadhi of Buddha has that power. Okay, mm. thank you. Milarepa also did similar things. I, I forgot how they were called. He could also transform the space into earth or something, or something solid suddenly out of a good motivation, I forgot the story, but yeah, those things. I had the same question, so it's, and it's actually a little more clear in the Padmakara one, which says, may everyone have unrestricted wealth, just like the treasury of space. So for me, I mean, connecting to this, it's, it's like how space is unlimited. So may they always have like, unrestricted will. But somehow the line in this Stephen Bachelor ones is slightly different. It's a, a little different connotation. If you can, can you put that up? Yeah, that's true. Um, wait, Stephen. May all beings be without want for health. Well. Want for health. Well, so it's, yeah. uh, but here it's like, may everyone have unrestricted wealth, just like the treasury of space. For me, this, I don't know, somehow this makes a little more <laughs> I mean, but Stephen Bachelor is more like actually talking about contentment, no? You don't have the want. That's but actually how that not... you connect that with the second line, you know? I mean, that in that same context, it's uh, I'm, I'm not I did okay. Considering this particular two lines, how would we the... bring both together? Yeah, and without the want that is the source of dispute or harm, no. No, May that always I mean, treasury of space and not without want for wealth. 
No, the one the one for Welt, I think, is it. The Dutch one for Welt. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's a little bit cryptic because it I think it refers yeah. back to I mean, I can yeah. understand the first and third coming together, but the first and second coming together, I'm I'm not really clear. Uh, like the I mean the context of both together. Yeah, I think if you have if you have the power of treasury of space, if you have that samadhi, then yeah, you have you have everything you ever wanted, and then there is the want is oblivious. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like you are satiated, you know, no more wound. Okay. You know, if you eat palak paneer like one week, three times per day, <laughs> no more wound. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's a palak paneer samadhi actually. Could be. <laughs> um. Yeah, but but yeah, I think we talked about that last time also. Like yeah, Tibetan or like yeah, it was Sanskrit. Is is there's many there, there this especially in 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 poesy poetry poetry right in English. There are like um, the small words are, are miss is are, are not mentioned. You know, it's just the big words, and then that's why um, if you create an English translation, sometimes you you have to add the small words like for like in. Off and so on, and that then creates different interpretations. Yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. Because I both the translations is, it's quite different. But yeah. yeah. Now, now I get it. Okay. Then. Um. Twenty nine. May those who have a little splendor, like no charisma or. You know, very like teeny tiny mouses, we say in German, you know, like grayish and shy. Um, and one is um, suffering from being oppressed, but because of that, you know, or overshadowed by your massive husband or whatever, and um, or by other beings, you know, um, then yeah, one is creating a lack of confidence. Um, and 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 yeah, one has stage fright or is not able to stand or speak in front of others. Um, it is always splendor is usually used for King Tusing Ditsen or German Kenzo Bangpo, you know, the, that they have this majestic presence. Um, uh, yeah, come in doubt with majesty, exactly. Um, so may they really have that self confidence and have that courage and have that brightness. Or majestic presence. Um, of course, we of course we can all develop it, but for them, it's usually in their attributions. And may those whose body are worn with toil find magnificent and noble forms. Yeah, and if we have, um, as a human, for example, you know, if we have physical disadvantages um, or disformities. Um, or maybe also in the commentaries, yeah, if we are really um, not attractive, you know, but attractive not in the sexual sense, but just like, you know, I think the Dalai Lama is attractive, you know, it's like it's so nice to look at him, you know. Um, and I think that is the job of uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, so to attract beings, you know, um, like that. Um, yeah, find magnificent and magnificent and noble forms. <clears throat> yeah. Then 30, um, may all lower life forms in the universe take rebirth in higher forms. Um, may the lowly obtain grandeur and may the proud be humbled. Oh, I wasn't aware that he's translating it like that. Palavi, I'm sure you have something else in Patmakal, no? With 30. Yeah. Can you read it? Sorry. May all the 31, yeah. May all the Thir women of the world yeah. attain the strength of masculinity and may the lowly come to excellence, the proud and haughty lose their arrogance. Yeah, I thought we have to go, go into the discussion with the women here, but uh, luckily it's not even topic here in uh, in 
in Stephen Bachelors, yeah. but in Tibetan, it's really like woman, you know, like, and, and so they, so, so Shantideva is saying, mm, um, basically, the, the idea is, um, so he's, so basically, he's saying that the women, um, in some translations, yeah, become, yeah, attain the strength of a man, you know, or have a, but that, please don't, um, I should not even raise that problem, but, <laughs> but it's not meant like that. Um, Actually, it was in that era also where uh, it was seen that way, but of course it doesn't apply these days that you have to yeah. be like having that masculine strength. But the idea is still that um, that, that women are underprivileged even nowadays, you know, and at that time much more, you know. So, so the wish of Shantideva is that everybody who is underprivileged, especially the women, that women, that's why he's really mentioning women in oh in Tibetan it's mentioned. Um, may they may they have the same conducive situation like the men, you know, may they have the same ideal position and the same whatever salary and and rights and everything. So that is really the idea. And um at that time, I, I recently checked a commentary, there's also written that women had um, some diseases at that time that men just couldn't have uh, had. And, and so that made, then they were very difficult to treat. And um, and so that is also then difficult. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. And also other commentators said, yeah, women at that time were more, more bullied, you know or taking advantage of, I mean, this we still have. And yeah, so that is, it's all meant like that, you know, please always know Buddha taught precious human life and that was always gender free. Buddha taught about Buddha nature, which is always gender free. Um, but then, yeah, the outer circumstances are different and they have been always, I mean, and most of our cultures have been in favor of men. So therefore, yeah, Shantideva is saying, yeah, may, may women and everyone who is uh, not having a good situation may he or be, mm, may he, she be in that, in, in that better conducive situation. Mm. Um, yeah, at that time, in, yeah, Katya, yes. Um, wait, that was... Um, yeah, the Vaibhashika school, I think, is saying that what Katya is writing here, isn't there also the idea that you had to be a man to attain enlightenment at that time? Yes. Recently, with Sunam, who some of you know, Sunam Jamso from Tsongsa, um, he, who lives in Hamburg, Germany, um, he said, yeah, it's it's like that in Mipam Rinpoche's Gateway to Knowledge, Kenchuk, um, that is really written like that. And Mipan Rinpoche, that's not Mipan Rinpoche's view, but it's it's he is copy pasting what uh, the Vabashika, the lower school of Buddhism, is saying. Mm. And yeah, that was that was actually yeah the the view at that time. Um, but then um, but then Buddha definitely taught different things, and he was super inclusive for women, which was very. A very revolutionary or rebellious act at that time, you know, that he even that he ordained women and um, and so on. And, I mean, he did really a lot, which was very like yeah, provocative in in the very like patriarchic time that he lived in. But from my point of view, so the higher schools, um, they don't see any difference there. Yeah, men or, or women, um, like the body is is the same. Um, has the same um, potential or opportunity to attain um, Buddhahood. I actually heard Tsongsa Kensa once say that he thinks women are actually more suited, uh, especially. Um, and he also said that it's actually better if you're heterosexual that you have a teacher of, of the opposite sex. So he he said that actually, so he thinks that's even good that there are so many male teachers because it's it's actually good for the women. Um, but I don't know if he, if he was really meaning it literally, but um, yeah, but anyway, the point is from my other point of view, yes, the, the, the gender really doesn't matter. Um,
Okay, so, but here the point is really like may all beings who, who have difficult situations and conditions and circumstances and therefore are not supportive in, supported in their practice, may they all find strong, good, supportive situations, circumstances and situations so that they can practice. I don't know, but if, if that is, but the, you know, the Pope thing, there are always male popes, but there's a German movie called The Female Pope. And so that also is discussing that topic, you know, that um, they, they were not, the girls were not even allowed to read, you know, that is like, that is blocking so much, you know, just, that's just simple, that's that not allowing that, you know. So then, I think that was the most controversial verse. Then 31. By the merits I have accumulated, may every single being abandon all forms of evil and perpetually engage in virtue. Yeah, here the I is Shantideva. Um, he has accumulated a lot of merit by uh, composing the Bodhisattva Tara or by teaching is it and um, so yeah and he's hoping that all beings that are also like limitless as the sky is vast um, that everybody is overcoming negative actions and is yeah doing good things that's easy may they never be parted from the awakening mind Bodhisattva and more they always engage in Bodhisattva Tara so may they always listen, study, reflect, meditate, practice, embody the teachings of the Bodhisattva. Mm. That means like, may they always practice the six parameters and may they be cared for by the Buddhas. Yeah, may they find their gurus um, uh, and teachers, authentic ones, of course. And then, um, yeah, may they be really like free from negative actions. And yeah, also um, may they be free from, um, yeah, again, difficult circumstances. If there's a lot of fighting around one, if there's a lot of worldly business one has to do, or if one, yeah, is not continuing, um, yeah, you know, what is the word? Yeah, if one has this poverty mentality, um, you know, that we think I'm not good enough or, my knowledge is not good enough, or I, a bodhisattva is too big, you know, or I'm too lazy, you know, these things, um, so that all that should be overcome, and um, and instead one should practice six parameters on bodhisattva. Then 33, may sentient beings have lives inconceivable long when in fortunate realms. Yeah, that's a good bracket because, um, yeah, the, the hell realms, you know, if you calculate, this is sometimes it's kalpas or millions of years, you know, how long they are traditionally said to, to live there. Um, but here we basically talk, yeah, may, may we have a long, precious human life, you know, because with that we can practice the Dharma and be really of benefit for others. Mm. Yeah, may they always live in contentment, happy, and unfamiliar even with the word death or untimely death. Um, yeah, so I think that is like a hidden praise to the precious human life and that we should have that as long as possible. There's some animals here, no? <laughs> Big Indian dogs. Um, then 34 um, may there abound in all directions so I think this is again it's like more like a prayer that the whole world and the environment is transformed into a pure land may there abound in all directions gardens of bushfulling trees um and so that we can all get the, the, the things that we really need filled with the sweet sound of Dharma. The teachings are resounding there, proclaimed by the Buddhas and their kids. Um, 
Yes, their sons that um, that is or heirs, you know, H E R no H E I R S. So that that are always the bodhisattvas, <clears throat> and yeah, there's actually no gender in in that term. Oh, sometimes there is in Tibetan. It's sometimes prince is really like male, but of course it's it means male and female. So heirs, I think, is a good word here. <clears throat> who hold the legacy of Buddhas or who follow the footsteps of the Buddhas that are the Bodhisattvas. Mm. And may the land everywhere be pure, wholesome, clean, smooth and devoid of any rocks, just because it's dangerous and we might lose our precious human life. Level like the palm of the hand, so very spacious and flat. And what is it? No, no Lego? on the ground because it is super painful if you step on Lego, I don't know, the plaything, and um, and of the nature of lapis lazuli. Yeah, I don't know, the lapis lazuli, yeah, it's, it's a stone, right? Um, um, could be a little bit hard, but it's also said in the commentaries that yeah, it should be very s smooth and, uh, but with nice color. Yeah, these are all like culturally colored descriptions, you know, of um, yeah, what is like a conducive surrounding. I think that could be a little bit adapted if we want, if we don't feel touched by that. <clears throat> we can think of other examples. Then 36, for all the circles of disciples, may many bodhisattvas dwell in every land adorning them with the excellent manifestations. Yeah, that is a little bit like what was Veronica was liking that, right? Um, um, if you are lost in a forest, you know that you have good companions. That is a little bit what the Bodhisattvas here are asked to do, you know, that they manifest um, wherever people are lost, whenever people are alone, whenever people need guidance or help. Um, and then, yeah, the bodhisattvas, um, I mean, they have their bodhisattva vows, so they don't need to be reminded, actually. But um, but here, yeah, may, may that manifestation of bodhisattvas, their presence, may that easy, easily uh, function so that, um, yeah, whenever there are students or whenever there are people in need, um, then may they manifest the bodhisattvas and that could be as a as a human as a person but could of course also be as the teaching itself <clears throat> or could be um also just like a conducive circumstance you know if it's like too hot you know that a cold breeze or or good food if there's none you know or medicine if, if there's sickness mm. and um yeah so so from especially from Vajrayana, we try to to perceive everything um, that is good or helpful in a difficult circumstance, you know, as the manifestation of our guru or of the Buddha. So that is, I think, the similar idea here. Thirty-seven. Please, whenever there's something, just raise your hand. But um, yeah. May all embodied creatures, yeah, again, that are sentient beings, uninterruptedly hear the sound of Dharma issuing from birds and trees. Yeah, instead of just a bird singing or, I don't know, the word, um, if a tree, the, the leaves make noise or some old trees are sighing or something. So maybe here that as Dharma teachings or in the Chayana, we could also say mantras, beams of light and even space itself. Mm -hmm. Do we hear the sounds of Dharma issuing from the um, Yeah, the, the idea is that um, that everything that we can hear or see or perceive that that is triggering us to to contemplate on the truth you know on the dharma and and to to get deeper understanding of the dharma um and yeah i think that's that's the main idea 
um, again, it's similar to, to yeah, may, may all beings have good connection with the Buddhas and Dharmas and also with their teachers. May they always meet with the Buddhas and their daughters and sons, <clears throat> comma, the Bodhisattvas. Um, then may these spiritual masters of the world be worshipped with endless clouds of offering. Yeah, so may all beings have the connection to authentic teachers. Um, yeah, and teachers are, it said, nowadays more important than the Buddha because we can't meet the Buddha, so therefore we have to rely on teachers. Therefore, the Mahayana teachings, not even Vajrayana, but the Sutra Mahayana teachings are saying that therefore the kindness of the teacher is even greater because he or she is manifesting in our times. Could, of course, be a manifestation of the Buddha. That is not excluded. And um, and then, yeah, we worship them with endless clouds of offering or services. Um, yeah, and then I'm sure you have heard Chick Lingpa is talking about like three types of offering. The 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 external offering is really like if we if we support the teacher with material things like food or money even, um, and the medium sort of offering is if we are uh, offering our service. You know, I don't know, driving the teacher or organizing teachings. And then the best offering to the teacher is like practicing, you know, that we really practice the Dharma. No. 39. May celestial, may celestials in. Um, and here that, uh, that is, is more like really like um, samsaric beings, you know, could be even nagas or spirits or gods um, who have that ability, you know, to, to bring rain, which is important, you know, um, if there is too much drought, so that harvests may be bountiful. Otherwise, there's famine other, and then there's death. <clears throat> may kings act in accordance with Dharma and the people of the world always prosper. Yeah, that that was definitely the tradition in Tibet. No, that mm. there were these Dharma Rajas, the Dharma kings. Mm. I think in the ancient Greek that was also the idea. No, that <clears throat> wise people are the leaders. Um, it makes sense. I mean, like the Dalai Lama, he was really revered as the god and king at the same time. Um, in our words, um, yeah. And otherwise, yeah, if we have selfish, self-centered or egomanic kings, dictators, um, then yeah, that will only lead to war, you know, that sooner or later and injustice. So mm, therefore, yeah, let's really pray that our leaders, kings, presidents, chancellors are as wise and compassionate as possible. And skillful when talking with each other. Um, may all medicines be effective, number 40. Um, and the repeating of mantras successful. So that could be, <clears throat> yeah, also healing mantras or spells, you know, um, and so that they really bring the benefits. And here may the dakinis. I mean, Dakini is usually a compassionate mind. Um, and cannibals that are more like spirits, you know, that move in space, you know, like there are different kinds of spirits. Like um, maybe you have heard Yakshas uh, or Rakshasas or Pretas could be also meant with that. Um, or they also talk about ogres, you know, like Shrek in the movies. Um, but Shrek was a very kind one. I mean, he was compassionate. No, but maybe sometimes... I don't know, maybe when he was a little bit hangry, he was not so well. Um, but anyway, so may all of them be compassionate and kind. Then 41, mm, may no living creature ever suffer, um, commit evil or ever fall ill. 
yeah, really everybody be uh, free of suffering mentally or physically. And may no one be afraid or belittled or their minds ever be depressed. Mm. Okay, guys, do you have 10 more minutes? Then we maybe just finish the chapter today. Okay, I just, um, give me one minute. I need to get my charger. See you and maybe do your bio break if you need anything like input or output. Okay, dog. Then I hope you are back. Yeah, but they are really not so difficult. Um, I think this we already had forty one, right? Mm -hmm. Did we have forty one? Yes, then 42, in all temples and monasteries, um, so that means like where really like um, representatives of the Dharma are present, like scripture, statues, stupas, may reading and recitation flourish and remain. Your screen, your screen is not shared, Anna. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then there may the Dharma really be listened to, contemplated upon, recited, meditated, embodied. May the Sangha always be in harmony, supporting each other. And then, yeah, may the purpose, which is Buddhahood for all sentient beings, may that be accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one can really add prayers that there's no schism in the Sangha. I mean, nowadays we have that quite often because sometimes there are like two reincarnations recognized of one teacher and then people um, go different directions and against each other. Um, so therefore, yeah, it's always good to be very open-minded, like the Rime spirit. 43. May monks or nuns who desire or wish to practice, um, yeah, find quiet and solitary places. That was mentioned also a lot in the eighth chapter that we need solitude because it's just too much turmoil um, <laughs> with sentient beings or with the world in the city. And so therefore it's good from time to time to retreat. Not out of anger or anything or bitterness but with compassion you know to then practice well in solitude and then come back to the 
to the sentient beings. And through having abandoned all wandering thoughts when being in retreat, mm. may they meditate with flexible minds. Yeah, I think that is also something that like, once Ken Zellenbocher was asked, yeah, what is really the good sign or the best sign of a good practitioner? And he said, yeah, flexibility, you know? And I think that is also like in evolution, you know, like the species that is most flexible or adaptable I think Darwin was saying that, or somebody, um, yeah, will survive, you know. Mm. So we need really a flexible, serviceable mind. And that happens, yeah, if we are not so rigid with our self-clinging. May nuns uh, be material, materially sufficient and have no difficulties there, but also get the same sponsoring abandon quarrel with each other and be unharmed. Yes, that's of course true for monks too. May they not fight, but be peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, may all ordained ones never let the morality weaken. So may everybody has um, is holding their vows. Yeah, because yeah, it really simplifies the life. What I said earlier, it's really cooling down the heat of the glaciers. Then, um, now we talk about if, if the discipline or the vows are not held properly. Having repented any moral faults may evil always be eradicated and thereby obtaining a happy state of birth may spiritual conduct not decline even there. So, I mean, we, we don't, I mean, we talk about the, the ideas we should think about <laughs> if the discipline is not well, you know. Um, how much yeah we harm others and ourselves how much we're not listening to the teachings anymore how much we forget what we have heard how much little progress we do and therefore yeah we should be really sincere and we should do our confession or um, practice or purification practice and um, yeah overcome negative actions or negative tendencies and um and that will create good future circumstances, happy state of birth. Um, and then, um, yeah, we can then also continue our practice. 46, um, may the wise be honored. That is of course not for their sake, but it implies that we understand what is wisdom and what is a good ethical conduct. Mm -hmm. And may they receive arms. Of course, they need also to be supported. May their mind be completely pure and may they be renowned in all directions. And that is again, not selfishly meant, meant selfishly, but yeah, really they should inspire all beings. And therefore it's good, you know, I think the Dalai Lama is one of the most famous people in the world and that's good. You know, there's a small connection that everybody has with him. May beings not experience the misery of lower realms because there's just too much suffering. And there's no freedom to practice the Dharma. May they never know any long lasting hardships or difficulties. Um, but with a physical form, a human form, which is superior to God's, because God's have a too good time, you know, so therefore they don't have they don't have the thorn of suffering sort of that is triggering them to practice. Mm. So therefore we always wish um, that beings take the human form and then by practicing Bodhisattva path, Bodhisattva may they swiftly attain Buddhahood. Then Sorry for galloping, but I think it's all clear. Um, may sentient beings again and again make offerings to all the Buddhas. Yeah, I said already what Jigme Lingpa said. There are the three types of offerings. The best is just to practice the Dharma. And may they constantly be joyful with the inconceivable bliss of the Buddhas. Yeah, that is basically the Buddhahood. That is some permanent happiness if you want you know some inconceivable um 
inexpressible state beyond usual conditioned happiness or suffering. Just as they have intended, may the bodhisattvas fulfill the welfare of the world. Mm. That means like, yeah, may, may really the bodhisattvas, re may their activities and practice really be efficient to, to bring people on the path to enlightenment and bring them to Buddhahood. And the same also here. And may all sentient beings receive whatever the Buddhas have intended for them. So may all sentient beings be guided, supported, assisted by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Similarly, may the Prateka Buddhas, that are those who like to be more alone and practice without a teacher and contemplate on death by contemplating on the 12 links of dependent origination, and other the Shravakas who receive teachings and teach them to others. Both of them have compassion, but not that much as Bodhisattvas. Find happiness and yeah, actually from Mayana point of view, may that then enter Mayana path at some point to attain Buddhahood. True, because Pateka Buddhahood or Shravakayana Ahadhood is not the final goal from Mayana point of view. So may they really find everlasting, complete happiness or enlightenment slash Buddha. So now 51 to 56, um, a little bit different dedication is that we maybe um, have the, we ourselves may be able to manifest the Buddha activities. So 51, and until I reach the level of the joyous one, that is the first boomy, the first step, sort of as a sort of already enlightened, but not fully enlightened bodhisattva. Mm. Through the kindness of Manjushri or Manjugosha is another name, which is one of the main yidams or deities of Shandideva. May I be mindful throughout my lives. That is again, you know, may may we remember all the previous life to really have certainty in the working of karma and always obtain ordination yeah you can see it like uh, literally by understanding that as a normal householder maybe it's too distractive mm, therefore it's maybe good to be ordained but the main thing is doesn't have to be literally being ordained but the main thing is yeah that we that we really focus our practice or not focus our life on the practice and stu study And 52, may I live and be sustained um, by simple common food. So maybe be healthy and happy and have yeah, the food that we need and maybe also have the contentment that we don't need like five-star food every day. And in all my lives, may I find the ideal solitude of practicing Dharma, which of course comes from renunciation that we are not so much more interested in um, worldly things and then comes a very famous praise that we also find in the praise like at the end of a praise to manjushri very often whenever i wish to see something or see him actually whenever i wish to see manjushri or even wish to ask the slightest question now he's praying to his own deity. May I behold without any hindrances, may there be no obstacles, but really like clearly in front of Shantideva, may there be Manjushi himself, may there be the Lord Manjugosha himself. So we can pray like that to whatever deity is our most important, you know, or our guru, you know. Mm. But something here is not so good. I think it should be whenever I wish to see him or her. Could be Tara, or even wish to ask the slightest question. May I behold without any hindrances, mm, Tara herself. 54, in order to fulfill the needs of beings who reach to the ends of space, may my way of life be just like that of Manyugosha. 
So in order to attain the twofold goal, goal so that we attain Buddhahood and that we can guide others to attain Buddhahood, um, and then we think of all beings that are limitless in number, like the space is vast. Um, yeah, we just follow Manjushri's footsteps or our deities or lama's footsteps. Oh, and 55, this is a favorite one from the Dalai Lama, so I let him read that read. I found the video somewhere. I hope the audio is fine. Wait. Da -da -dum. Here. Oh yeah, here it is, this is so confusing. Um, wait, I don't know if you can see. Share yeah, sound, optimize the video clip, okay. So that is now verse 55. This is my favorite prayer. Daily, I pray this. That is, it gives me inner strength. So enthusiasm to serve sentient being a humanity on this one. As long as space remains, and as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain and help dispel the misery of the world. Yeah, I think that is very clear and beautiful. That is also recited very often. Mm -hmm. So we really wish to not be in samsara, but we appear in samsara, you know, out of compassion and wisdom to really despair the misery of the world, the suffering of sentient beings. Um, and yeah, we, we are then equipped with wisdom and compassion. Therefore, what we talked about last time, we will not be suffering so much. And even if we suffer a little bit, we have the courage to do that because we know we can help others there. Then 56, may all the pains of living creatures or beings, that means all samsaric beings, ripen solely upon myself. So that is sort of the practice that we just wish you know to <clears throat> that we take all the suffering of others on ourselves and give them all our happiness and through the might of the bodhisattva sangha may all beings experience temporal happiness and ultimate happiness <clears throat> so through the might of bodhisattva sangha or practice you can also say and then 57 now we wish for the long life of the Dharma, also super important. Mm. May the teachings, which are the soul medicine for suffering, because um, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's really the antidote to samsara. It's the opposite of suffering. It's the opposite of the causes of suffering and the origin of every joy, because it brings Buddhahood and also like temporal happiness also you know even if i'm not um so if i practice a little bit selflessness and love and compassion today you know that that of course brings me closer to buddhahood the ultimate happiness but also today my day will be better you know because i didn't fight i didn't get angry you know i, I will sleep better you know and and things like that there's also temporal happiness already now you know um so may all of them be materially supported and honored and abide for a very long time. I just need to check one thing. Thank you. Um, so, so we really hope that the teachings will last, you know, that people can always listen to it and have access to it and be benefited by it. Mm -hmm. And then the very last concluding verse is, I prostrate to Manyugosha through whose kindness wholesome minds ensue. So Shantideva is paying homage with his body, speech, and mind to his main deity, Manyushi, because, yeah, Manyushi's kindness or blessing is what really put Shantideva on the path. And, um, yeah, he was the guide and companion on his path 
Um, and so Shantideva practiced the path and attained, I think, the Bhumis or whatever. And also he is prostrating, Shantideva is prostrating to, uh, with body, speech and mind to his spiritual masters through whose kindness I develop. As I said, they are like, um, yeah, they are really like mm, the beings that we need, you know, around us and that can guide us. And that's it. Hence chapter finished, surprisingly. And um, and by that also, the entire book is finished again or completed, sort of. And yeah, thank you for joining. And um, yeah, it's Shantideva, the whole text. If you have not read it, please read it. And it's really like a must read, must contemplate, must meditate upon book. <laughs> and um, it's, yeah, one can study it, but the main thing is, of course, that is to practice it, to really put it into life. Um, so then there is the benefit for oneself and others. Okay, let's dedicate. Thank you so much for coming. And a few dedications. Da -da -dum. By this merit, having attained omniscience and defeated the enemy of wrongdoing, may I free all beings from the ocean of existence with its tumultuous waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death. Just as the heroic Manyushi who knows everything as it is, and as Samantha Bhatwa likewise did too, just so to follow all of them and train myself, I perfectly dedicate these meritorious actions. May the precious Supreme Bodhisattva arise in those in whom it has not arisen. Having arisen, may it not diminish, but ever expand more and more. As long as space remains, and as long as the world remains, may I too remain to elevate the suffering of the world. May I, in each and every lifetime, carry the weight of Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings. And if I cannot bear that weight, at the very least, may I be born with the burden of thinking that the Buddha Dharma could mean. So, again, thank you so much. For me personally, I'm happy that it's now the second time I went through the entire Buddhist avatar like this, so that is good. Makes me happy just to have lived that long so far. And yeah, thanks to Shantideva, thanks to Tsongsa Kenzer Rinpoche, and also thanks to Natya, who started uh, the wish to do that. Thank you so much, Anna. Do you already know what's next? Yes. But next will be like from June onwards. Um, Alex Trisokli and I we will do Uttara Tantra Shastra, like also a little bit open ending. And we will try a new format, which is more like a, a conversation between us and all of you if, who are joining. So it will be more conversational style that we go through the Uttara Tantra Shastra, which is the classical main text on Buddha nature. When are you starting on? June. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Take good care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. So kind.